Let's introduce this lovely gentleman to my left. Um, a few, you know, last couple of years has been kind of dominated by like one or two games, and I kept hearing at conferences, no, no games are going to break through and make loads of money. Free to play is impossible nowadays. It's all doom. Then this little frogger-like game came along, very recently, and somehow you seem to make loads of money. So let me introduce Matt. Matt, do you just want to sort of introduce yourself in your background? Hello, everyone. Uh, yeah, so I'm one half of Hipster Whale. The other half is over there. That's Andy. And I've been making uh, apps since 2008, and Andy and I formed a company in September and released a game in November called Crossy Road, and it's done rather well. Somewhat. It's gone how okay. much did you? How much did we, as Unity Ads, pay you in a month? <laughs> just, just because I thought we, I'd put that yeah, out there. We, we did. Uh, we did cross the one million dollar mark. We did yep. cross the one million. Really I love that. I love. I mean, I, it's something I, I'd never grow bored of saying. Uh, so I'm. Um, so I could do a lovely chat about lovely ECPM and making money, and isn't that great? And you can make money out of free users, but I think that's a bit boring. I'd much rather talk about how can we actually look at the design aspects of, of this kind of stuff and actually think, it, can we make a more effective and better experience? And the reason why I think it's just brilliant to look at Crossy Roads and, and why I'm so glad to talk to Matt is I think we could have that conversation in a really interesting way. So, I mean, I think when we first started talking on Skype, we were talking about kind of your inspirations and why you wanted to make the game the way you did. And yeah. I think originally we were talking about having multiple currencies and things like that. Do you yeah, want to sort of we went down that? the rabbit hole there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. free-to-play free was fairly complicated and um, we always knew we wanted to have ads in it. That was actually one of the foundations. I uh, was really inspired by Disco Zoo's implementation yeah. of ads, which um, the, the, the developers of that game were very kind to share their first week's numbers with us, which proved that you could very easily make a good living, mm. even if your app only had basic, you know, rewarded video in there. And that sort of found, formed the foundation, and we, uh, I kept that in mind for probably six months until I finally had the frogger slash flappy bird idea mm. and started to build the app on that foundation. But I think what's th what was really interesting about that, I think, was also that that particular game gave you these opportunities where yeah. it was natural to want, to yeah. actually want to watch That's these right. videos. And, and what, 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 when you were looking at this... I watched more ads the, yeah. <laughs> the week that came out than <laughs> I had for years. And it's crazy. Yeah. And, and there's, there's always a dilemma, though, isn't it? Because I don't know if how many of you are using... How many of you are using ads in general? I mean, put your hands up if you're using ads in your games. I mean, it's, I'm... If I'm not seeing everybody, I'm confused. Okay, so you should be. Um, not Well, that's not always the case, is it? There are other no. circumstances where you wouldn't have used ads, do you think? Probably in a premium game. Probably in a premium. <laughs> well, you say that, though. But, I mean, we did actually have some premium games a while ago where we actually experimented with yep. putting ads into a premium game. And we found there was no kickback. Oh, there was, like, a few vocal protests. Sure. But numbers-wise, absolutely no impact whatsoever. In fact, we, we did actually do some focus group research following it, absolutely zero impact, provided you were up front and you weren't hiding it and you weren't pretending. With a rewarded video, I mean, it's all opt-in anyway, so yeah. if people don't want to see ads, they never have to see them. So well, exactly. Yeah, it's, it's fairly consumer-friendly in that way. And hopefully we're getting a bit closer. So um, we're going to rush through the videos just because I don't want to bore you with videos. I just want to show some examples where these things are are used so Matt and I can then talk about what we think about the implementation. In this case, we've got the Sega Rally, uh, Sega, what's it called? Sega Run? Sonic. Sonic Run, Sonic Run. Um, and what happens in there is you, you play it, you, f you hit a, an obstacle, you uh, collapse, and you can lose some rings, but you can choose to use some of the in game currency or you can watch a video to continue playing. That's really the kind of formula. What do you think of that? Oh, and of course, this is the interstitial that's going on here. Um, so this is, once you've got that and you, you're opting to watch the video, they're, they're showing this. An interesting one on that one was that they're using kind of human footage as well as in-game footage for the yeah. creative. And I suppose we ought to start with that bit. The creative actually has quite an important part to the way those things are working. I know that's, uh, how much, do you do no, that kind of we, stuff we haven't, we haven't messed no. with any because we're not actually doing user acquisition. Do you see that in terms of the, when you see r sources of revenue, do you see the quality of the ads having an impact? No, no. no. Essentially, I, I think we do. It, I mean, they, the Unity ads do uh, mm. optimise for us to make sure that the ad it suits, our, suits our demographic. Yeah. yeah, and I think that's, again, that's another important yeah. thing. So let's go back to oh, Extra Lives. Yeah. It, did that 
come we, up as an idea for you guys? Uh, we we wanted to keep our game pure, so mm. we didn't um, have a we don't have a save me button in our game. But it's actually reasonably effective because it, it's that's basically what Disco Zoo did, which yeah. was the the key influence. Because what you're going to do is you're going to have opportunities to watch ads quite regularly and then participate or then get back to the game. And yeah. I, th I think that's a really interesting point. It's because there's a tension, I think, between this need to see the ads regularly yeah. in order to get their income without creating Reg a situation Regularly, but not too regularly. Yeah. yeah. And I think different games have a different pace to that, don't they? Yeah. I think, and the Sonic 1 and your 1, that all makes sense. I think in, I don't know if it was a chess game, I think that would be a bit pro problematic. <laughs> not who's going to make checkmate. a chess game? Checkmate. You have to yeah, back Yeah, up. exactly. Yeah. Pay, get checkmate, then you get another video. Uh, let's look at a different model, uh, a different example. This is actually from the uh, Transformers um, game. Uh, now, th what they do in this one is you'll see this is coming to the end of a particular level. Then you're going to go and get the score. And when you get the score, you're offered the opportunity to double your score by watching a video, getting double rewards. So it's quite an appealing thing for the guys who are trying to get progress through the game. Um, is that is that a model you've thought of, or, or I, I actually thinking? hadn't seen had actually hadn't seen mm. that before. I was looking at this before when you showed me the yeah, video. Yeah, I thought yeah. that's pretty cool, but I, I, it's it's not really like that tiny little double rewards thing, like mm. a massive two X all over the place. Yeah, yeah. Hit this button would probably be a much better way to present that mm. instead of yeah, get uh, extra rewards. And I think that's an important question. I know I, I know the guys who make uh, the excellent guys who make that uh, transforming. I think they've done a really yeah. good job generally, and they've done really well. Um, so I don't, I don't want to bash them, but I do think it's a really interesting thing to think about. It's actually similar to ours because, y you know, we mm. it's how you generate currency in yeah. our game. So exactly. it's, ver it's very close, but I would probably make it a little more song and dance there. So, yep. so that, I think, uh, for, for those of you in the room who are thinking about this, it's like you think about what you're doing when you're presenting these video ads. Think about what they're doing for the user because you're having to excite them about being engaged and you want them to watch these videos. You don't want them to leave. You want, well... You're quite, uh, this is the interesting conundrum, isn't it? P people don't generally leave the game unless they were going to leave the game anyway. Yeah. And they'll watch videos because they'll enjoy watching the videos. And they may well go. In fact, you want them to go and download and play those games. Yeah. Because that's why you're being paid. We can download them now and then play them later. Exactly. Like, yeah. It doesn't we, have to really interrupt your I think session. we all do that. Yeah. I think we all do yeah. that kind of, kind of constant sort of play through multiple things now. So I think this idea of communicating is really interesting. Yeah, this one's pretty good. Another, this is uh, an interesting one. So I don't know. Um, it's actually one of my favourite games. Um, uh, it's just so stupid. Also an Australian developer. Exactly, yeah. and a, a very sort of. Um, I don't know if moralistic is the right word, but it's, it's, it came around this idea of teaching kids not to run on trains. But this had used the interstitial model. So there wasn't a choice in this context. They decided to have the suppose you play the game and then you move straight into the the video. You can skip it. Yeah. Though. How do you feel about that? Skipping, well, skipping the video is something we didn't want to put in, mm. just simply for tutorial reasons. So if, if someone comes in and we allow them to skip the video, they might not ever realise mm. they're watching a video and earning coins. So we didn't have that. Yeah. If you have, you know, skipping the video is a bit of a complicated one, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. I think, it's, I think what I like about this is in the context of this game, it works. Yeah. Because it's a game which you're playing lots and lots of mini games and you're trying to keep up the pace and you have these sessions yeah. And if you time it right and you get to the end of the session, that's actually quite a good point to have a breather. And if you're watching a video and you know you're then contributing yeah. the revenue of that game, that I think is okay. It yeah, for, for us, we wanted to avoid interstitials completely because mm. it, um, it, anything that was going to damage our retention, as in take someone out of the game, was a, was a no-no. That was just the philosophy of the game. Mm. So we wouldn't do this, mm. but it's... It's definitely it's worth. Defini yeah. I, I, I think yeah. it's worth thinking when you look at your game. Think about the the way that the game is played and its pace. So it's the, it's not just the moment of the session. It's how you you have the sort of tick and the top, the kind of intense play and the break, and how you use that break session to your advantage in design. We want to have no break at all. Yeah, yeah. no break. I'm gonna do another one with the <laughs> emo emu. Next. I love the emo emu. Um, and. And again, this is another one where you can, in, in this one, this is yeah. the retry. Again, really simple, really obvious implementation, but it gives you a visceral, valuable thing. You can see how much it's worth to you because you would have otherwise had to spend a coin, yeah. and now instead you can watch a video to do it. I use this one a lot, so I was actually watching those videos. Yeah, yeah. It, and it was quite effective because you're already on a, you sort of got a little mid-level mm. break, 
um, you, it's actually a pretty good reward because it means if you're going to die in the next section, you don't have to replay that. Whole, it's saving you time. So Genuinely watching the emotional. ad is actually saving your time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's it, cool. Yeah, it's a genuine saver, lifesaver. In, in you know, because I would probably get to the stage where I want to throw the phone away. Yeah, you can sometimes, yeah. d you know, it's like a minute of time yeah. that you can go on yeah. and on and on. Yeah, it worked really well. And I think that's again another thing. Is, you know, what is the reward you're getting? If you think about that when you're using video ads, what is the reward that you're getting for that video? And it's an interesting one, particularly when you look at currency, because currency, when you've watched a video to get that currency, has an intrinsic, at least time reward, and also yeah. an expectation, I think, from the player. It's quite often, you can, you can rig your game to ensure that, okay, this 15 second video is going to save you actual, mm. real, mm. potential waste of time. That, mm. And then you, you <laughs> balance that up quite yeah. quickly, yeah. yeah. But again, I think... It, it, as long it, as your game suits it. Yeah. Exactly. And I think, again, the reason why I wanted to take this talk, slant to talk about Unity ads is because I think it we really is important to us is to make sure that we get successful game developers. So it's be better for us if you can keep your, your value as a game to the advertiser high by keeping the engagement of the audience high. Um, so let's have another, another look. Um, Slightly different one. This is actually a hugely successful game for us as well. Uh, this is the um, Hill Climb Racer. They do a huge amount of um, um, ads. So th in this case, what they've done is they've created coin. It was a bit fast. I'm sorry about that. But they had a list of coin options that you could get. Bottom of that list, there's the watch video, get yeah, free coins. That was sort of the first time I saw it. Well, mm. not, not this game, but Subway Surface had exactly yes. the same yeah, thing exactly. where the, the option to watch an ad was buried in a mm. menu. Yeah, yeah. Which is, it's a bit sad to see it hidden away. I, mm. I wonder often how many people would actually mm. discover it. I mean, it, it is right at the bottom. Like, people do tend to get to those lists and head down to the bottom. But if you've got to do that every day mm. or a couple of times a day, and, and with video ads, you want mm. people to do it every now and then. You do. I, I think it's an interesting yeah. tension it creates, though. I mean, again, I think there's a designers which are worried about blanketing, spamming people, yeah. I think get nervous. And I don't think they need to. I think that's a, an overdue concern. But you know, I think, we, like we said earlier, this idea of selling, the you know, idea of watching a video yeah. being a good thing. Right, exactly. Mm. Yeah. Well, so we have people click on our ads every single time they pop up. Yeah. I, I can't count the number of times I've done <laughs> it. <That's right. laughs> I just yeah. can't. It's really yeah. And I have actually downloaded games as a result, because I'm sad like that. Um, it's a good thing. Why am I saying sad like that? It's a really good thing that we do that because that's the whole point of this is yeah. that we should be delighted by those ads. We should find things we didn't know about. That's the whole point of discovery. Yeah. And of course, we can't really go through this without showing this video. Sure. Um, so I, I do hope there's no one in the room who's not played this. If there is, then just download it now. Sorry, just do it because it's worth it. And it's actually better with the audio up, but I haven't got an audio connection. I don't know why, but there's something about this that gets me because of the Frogger thing. I just remember playing Frogger so much. And I kind of got bored of it, to be honest. Mm. And then this comes along, and I don't get bored of it because when I get that emo emu and everything turns dark and raining <laughs> and horrible. <laughs> and crying. I yeah. <laughs> Seriously? Yeah. Wow. And then the, li and the lightning bolts that come down with the Frankenstein and the trail yeah. of the snail. Yeah. Oh. It's again about attention to detail. And again, look at the kind of stuff that we want people to click on the download button. You want people to download because that's how we're generating revenue. You but you want to do it in a context. That ad isn't shown every time. If someone yeah. clicks on it, it goes away for a few minutes mm. until they, you know, play again. Yeah. yeah. We're going to tweak it a little bit as well. So at the moment, it comes up the first time you have a boot. So we find that some people force close the app to watch another ad. <laughs> so we're going to have to just give them a little, one minute, you can play for a minute and then you can watch your ad, yeah. I, I think it's a really interesting conundrum you just described there, you know. So you, you're actually- Yeah, people cheating to watch as many ads as they possibly can, yeah. Would you have expected that, that people would be cheating to watch more ads? I mean, I, again, I think this is about the attitude check difference, yeah, which is, yeah. you know, this idea that we're actually creating a premium value yeah, proposition yeah. through something you desire, and you feel like you're working for the game. Too. I mean, I do anyway. Maybe I'm. Maybe I'm just. A, am I unique like that? I feel like I'm giving back by watching the ads. That's, I think that's kind of a thing. Maybe. I, maybe it's because I'm a kind of obsessed gamer. I but appreciate it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it gets us paid. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so 
So, I mean, here, here we are. We've got you know a few minutes left. I mean, obviously, I want to open up to questions as well. Do you have sort of any kind of like, if you were to say like the top three things that you think people should be paying attention to about using this kind of medium to generate revenue, what would you say? I mean, one, two, three. Don't you take your pick of what that's you think is right. That's a tough one. It's tough. Yeah. Um, like the, as I was saying before, like the, the idea of, you know, it's 15 seconds or 30 seconds of someone's life, mm. but if you're giving them time or giving them something valuable, that's, that's the most important thing. I mean, if there's no good reason to click that ad, they will never, ever, they will ever, ever click it. Um, we, we have an interesting thing where our in-app purchases are also a, uh, everything's a dollar. Yeah. Like you have to buy characters, you can't actually buy consumables. So by doing that, we're trying to create an actual value. So people associate a character with a dollar, mm. even though it's, it's sort of like that. Mm. Um, and so watching five ads, they start to think about the fact that watching five ads is a dollar. And that mm. so it creates value also within, within, their, own, w within their own perception. Yep. Mm. Can't think of it. Yeah, no, that's fine. That's a, but I think that's the thing, isn't it? We're, so when we're looking at our games, we're thinking about monetization as Value, part of that yeah. design. Yeah. And exactly that. It's about monetization is not really not just about how much money we can get. It's about how much money, how much value. Yeah. We give in that's the right. experience. Yeah. So you know when you're looking at uh, seamless and and ways that don't get in the become blockers. I mean, I'm a I hate paywalls because they stop me from exploring the game. When we can unlock players through delighting them and charming them and creating moments inside our games that mean that this kind of experience can happen, then we know that it also can generate pretty significant revenue. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, it's also great, like, the, the ads themselves are a really great way of presenting the, the new games that are out. Like, if yeah. you're talking about it from the other side of the mm. fence, I mean, in 15 seconds of video, you can do way more than oh, exactly. banner ads and images. Yeah. And there's an example, I think, the one with the Sega one, where they have the two human characters talking about it. Yeah. And, and whether you think that was the best creative in the world or not, what it shows is that we're not tied to one type of thing. And the opportunity to actually start using some of the experience that people have learned from de designing television ads, but in such a more effective way because mm. we can actually show games being played. And I think that's you know pretty pretty profound stuff. Yeah. So in the last few minutes we've got, do you have any questions? We have an opportunity. I was a question at the back. I think we've got a spare mic for gentlemen at the back in the burgundy-ish. I think it's in the slide. I think burgundy top. Thank you. Uh, hi, a long time road crosser, first time caller. Um, <laughs> this isn't an ad question, so I'm very sorry, but uh, you've, you've probably got the data on this, right? Um, a, lot of the, uh, a lot of the animals in this game, they don't actually change the gameplay at all. Some make it they harder, don't they make all, it yeah. like black and white or whatever, yeah. maybe you can't see a car as easy. Visually harder, yeah. Are there any that are nevertheless luckier than others for some reason? No. <laughs> There are no, no. The flea is the one of the most popular characters because yeah. I think people think, "Oh, the hitbox must be small." It's exactly the same. Yeah, <laughs> it's an illusion. Yeah. yeah, I've had that conversation many a time. Yeah. That people and the hipster whale does not take a photo of you <sighs> when you boot the app. Oh. You would be surprised the number of people who we could do that. We have Every kids play? who put the phone yeah. away. And <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah. That might Thank be a you. bit too much. I'm Any more questions? I'm going to get this oh. video and I'm going to show it to my girlfriend because she insists that her favourite character is luckier than mine. Ah, so thank only you. the lucky cat is luckier. Only yeah. the lucky cat is lucky. There's a gentleman over here with the blue top that's going to got a question. Hi, uh, what do you think about the possibility of in-game ads moving on to other platforms beyond mobile or tablet? What I'm talking about is, for example. Uh, a PC game, but a lot of PC games are casual. Um, the reason I'm asking this is because um, Counter Strike in the year uh, 2006, 2005, the map the Dust 2 started having ads on the walls, and y you know that, right? Mm. That's like one of the biggest examples uh, in in-game ads that's on a non-mobile it device. It's fascinating for me because I remember a friend of mine who was involved in a company called Massive about 10, 12 years ago. And they were bought by Microsoft, and it was all about in-game um, objects. No, okay, they were focused on things like your pizza box would be Domino's one day, and then Papa Joe's the next, or whatever. Uh, so maybe that's not the best example. But there have been lots of, it, uh, of attempts to do in-game app, apps, uh, sorry, in-game ads 
for PC and, and online. I remember Anarchy Online in particular had a whole series of things that they were doing using movie trailers. So you, you could actually go to an area where you could watch movie trailers. So I don't think it's a question of is it going to move from mobile to PC. I think it's been tried lots yeah. of times in lots of spaces. But I think the mode of use of a mobile game is very suitable to it. Is that fair? We have, we have third-party characters in there that are actually cross-promoting other games. So we've got Forget Me Not and Epoch, yeah. who are friends of mine. And uh, after that, we did mm. Disco Zoo, who, mm. again, they provided the yeah. inspiration, so we just gave them a free ad. But if anyone here is from Coca-Cola, I will put a jumping yeah. Coca-Cola can into this oh. game for... I was pitching... Quarter of a million? Just off right, that, that, That'd be fine. Is that all? Is that's that, cheap. That's great value. Double it, double it. Value, <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, you know... I think I was pitching to Budweiser to do a sort of space shooter type banner ad in 99 when I was at BT. Never happened, but there was lots of things that have been tried. So I think it's a case of finding the right game, finding the right audience, but also making sure that the experience, like we've been talking about, mm. matches that. And one of the biggest problems, I think, historically has been finding the media buying teams to understand it. In the old days, we didn't really have that kind of model. And I'd say one of the things about the Apple Store and the Google Store, uh, the discovery issues that we have in mobile has forced us to find people who would adapt. And you know, we've got UC in the room, so you know, people like him would just kind of make this kind of intuitive leap and realize, actually, if I can be the guy who can provide that infrastructure and I've got the relationship with the game developers already, then we can make things that can make discovering games better. That's the kind of stuff that it takes. You know, to pulling together not just the inventory and the and the uh, advertisers, but also the spirit of the experience. So I think we'll get there. I mean, I don't know whether we'll ever do it. You have to ask him. Um, but you know, hey, boss. Um, but you know, we have to ask people like you to make that kind of stuff happen because it's those guys that have that intuitive leap to make that happen. And I don't think we know what the the borderline is. I mean, what do you think? You come on. You am I? As a PC, as you're moving to PC. It's just one-offs for us. Yeah. Yeah. Make a custom type of integration yeah. into product placement to get it in the game, and every game is different. Does it fit to the team? So imagine you're playing Cross the Road, and there is a billboard playing a video. Yeah, that could work. Mm -hmm. But then another game, it's completely different. How do you place it there? Does it actually fit in? But if you have a, a, a customized game, yeah, it's one-off. It's one-off type stuff, but yeah. you know. so so. But this type of rewarded video integration on PC, Mac, you know, web. Why not? Absolutely. And on PC, I think in the Flash games, the, this kind of advertising has been in there for even forever. It's yeah, kind of it's, it's more interstitial, but yeah, yeah, yeah. but, yeah. but it, 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 this type of advertising really relies that the game has an economy of some sort. You have to be able to get something. Cool. You heard it here first, anyway. Um, so, anyone got any last questions before we hand over? Oh, we got, oh. see, we started the ball rolling now. Excellent. <laughs> um, I have one question: is um, that this kind of a um, in-game advertisement, uh, uh, because it rewards player with certain uh, uh, gold coins or anything, isn't that exactly the same as incent uh, advertising? And it's really uh, called making a problem with the retention rate of the advertiser. Um, how, how do you differentiate yourself from the ins and off of wars? And it's a, it, it, I mean, just a, a very valid question, and you know, it's good to mention it, because I think, I think people do get confused what incentivize means. The fundamental psychological difference is I am getting the reward by completing the view. I'm not getting the reward by doing the download. So when I then decide to download as well, yeah. I'm getting something I've chosen to act on. And that makes a completely profound difference. So effectively what happens in an opt-in video ad is I, as a player, want coins. I watch a video to get coins. I can then leave it there. I've got coins. But if I then choose to get this game, I do so because it's a good video that has enticed me. It's created desire. I want that. And therefore, you get a very, very high value customers. Does that make that, sense? That's right. I mean. I think uh, with on the Android platforms, they don't have the rules that Apple does, and no. so 
they actually do reward you once you download it and then you install it and then you run it, which I have an, I have an issue with. Whereas this is just showing, like I said, it's just showing video. It's just rewarding someone for the 15 seconds to 30 seconds of time they, they donated to watch the, to watch the ad. And I know I know teams that do that, and I know I don't like offer walls yeah. at all. Yeah, don't. don't I'm not a fan of offer walls. I don't think they're a, they're a great model. They have a place in some games, I'm sure, but I don't think they leave a, a, a very clean taste in the mouth. No, I hate them. Yeah, yeah. do we fair? You can say that. <laughs> I've got to be nice. Okay, I think we ought to stop there.